is designed to boost the bargaining power of workers in both camps. And it's no accident the president chose to promote the measure in Wisconsin, where Governor Scott Walker and his Republican colleagues in the legislature have worked to reduce the bargaining power of organized labor. Obama argues that's misguided. Folks forget sometimes unions are what help bring about the 40-hour work week. Help bring about the idea of the weekend, and I know that's a popular concept. Walker, who is expected to join the crowded field of Republican presidential hopefuls this month, met the president at the airport this afternoon for what appeared to be a friendly conversation. The governor had harsh words for the president's overtime rule, though. Walker said in a statement the rule would ultimately lead to lower base pay for employees and reduced workplace flexibility. Scott Horsley, NPR News, The White House. The president says the new overtime rules would effectively mean a raise for about 5 million Americans. But some business groups see negative, unintended consequences. NPR's Yuki Noguchi spoke with some workers about how they say the change could affect them. Barrett Sanger has managed a music store in Corpus Christi for the last seven years. He oversees two dozen employees, stocks inventory, and fills in for sales clerks who call in sick. Sanger averages 62 hours of work a week. But because he's a salaried manager, he isn't paid for any extra hours work. As of right now, there is a zero tolerance for overtime. I've been written up for employees hitting overtime. Zenger earns more than $23,660 a year. So, under existing law, his employer can exclude him from earning overtime pay. But the president's proposal would more than double the minimum salary level to $50,440, meaning Zenger's salary would either have to increase or he would get paid for those extra hours. He isn't optimistic it will come to that. I would be fearful that I would be replaced by someone who could do the job at their expectation at a lower hourly rate or at a lower pay. Zanger says his employer has already cut higher paid employees. If he gets replaced, he says he wants to find a job where he will be paid hourly and get overtime. Being salaried, he says, isn't worth it. You are signing off to a certain degree for indentured servitude. You're signing off on having to go above and beyond with no additional compensation. Advocates of the changes in overtime rules say they're long overdue. They say workers are often misclassified as managers in order to skirt paying overtime. Justin Swartz is an employment attorney representing workers. He says updating the Fair Labor Standards Act will help curb abuse of salaried workers. One of the purposes of the FLSA is to encourage companies to hire more workers instead of squeezing work out of the workers that they have. Nor, he argues, do the changes mean businesses' costs will skyrocket. The only employers for whom it would make sense to raise somebody's salary a great deal in order to avoid paying them overtime are the ones who are exploiting the employees the worst to begin with. Dozens of categories of employees, including teachers and seasonal workers, will not see pay increases if the proposal is adopted because their positions are already specifically exempt from the law. But the business community says the proposal would still have the far-reaching effect of raising costs, especially for retail and restaurants. David French is chief lobbyist for the National Retail Federation. He says employers will have to demote managers 